Indeed, the Lord has been good to all of us. In our families, we have testimonies. In our places of work, we all have testimonies. In the schools our children attend, we all have testimonies to give. In everything, in this ministry, we have testimony. Come on, give me praise on the house, for the Lord has been good. He has been kind. He has watched over us. Hallelujah.
Let's exalt his name. Let's magnify his name. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. He alone deserves the glory. He alone deserves the honor. He alone deserves the adoration. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. 25 years is not easy. Say, Lord, we thank you for being with us this 25 years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the honor and adoration. Thank you, Lord. Emela. Emela.
Thank you for your church that is marching on and the gates of hell has not prevailed against it. As we have come, oh Lord, to appreciate you today, please accept our praises, Amen. accept our worship, Amen. accept all our presentations today, Lord. Amen. Let them be in glory to your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You are in for a good chant today, amen. Every, all the groups, the men, the, the women, everybody will be doing their presentation. How many people invited somebody here today? If you invited someone here today, raise up your hand. You cannot be, well, okay, thank you. You cannot be doing an event and don't invite people. Then, it's not an in-house, it's for people to see. Nathaniel saw, Andrew called him, say, come and see. This is not very, this is one of the bad aspects of most of us in this church. When it's time to invite people, we just, well, without wasting much time, the next 20 minutes, we want to hand out back to the men. The men presentation for the men. Let's clap for the men as they come up. Well, we can't wait for anybody. Just come up. Please just come up. Come up. 20 minutes. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we wake up? Can we wake up? I say hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, children of God. Hallelujah. The men in Restoration Chapel, the Gideons, the men of valor, tonight have a presentation Amen. to make. Hallelujah. Amen. The men want to minister unto the Lord tonight. And uh, I want you to join us as we sing unto the Lord tonight. And you shall be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are the men ready? Yes, we are. The church is ready to, <laughs> to, Amen. to see your presentation tonight. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless your name tonight. Daddy, we, oh God, worship you, Lord. We lift your name on high. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, for, oh God, everything you have done for us, oh God. Throughout this week, oh God, according to this anniversary, oh God, as it is going on, we bless your name because it's been wonderful. Tonight, oh God, we ask, oh God, that your glory will descend and let your power, oh God, come down and visit us once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we live here, we shall, O oh God, be singing your praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, a precious Father, for in Jesus' wonderful name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Amen.
It's now the time for the children presentation. The children presentation. Let's give it up to the children. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Praise the Lord. Are we all excited to be here? Praise the Lord. We are not singing today, but the children have picked up some topics to talk about. I hope you all will be blessed as we present these topics to you all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Yes, I don't expect you to be sitting down. Amen. Our presentation is scavenger hunt, but it's in a different form. We are gonna be displaying some Bible stories, the pictures, the little ones we identify the pictures. And these other ones, the preteen, they are going to summarize the story for us. Let's see what they've been learning for so long. Can you put your hands together for them? Okay, Technica, can you help us, please? With the first picture. Now, little ones, you're going to tell me what story of the Bible is this. If you know it, let me see your hand. Noah and the whale. Speak louder. Noah and the whale. I mean... He tried, he said Noah and the whale. Put your hands together for him. Yes, who else want to try? Look at it very well. Jonah and the whale. Put your hands together for him. The summary of the story, Jonah and the whale, is that God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach against the evil, but instead of going east, he went west and ran to Tarshish, which then he goes on the ship and sleeps. Then God wakes him up by a storm, and it was a terrible storm that Jonah knew God caused it. And Jonah tells the sailors to throw him off the ship. To then he gets swallowed by a whale. He was in the whale for three days. He asks for forgiveness and God sends the whale and Jonah back to the land. And he starts preaching against the evil in Nineveh. Jonah went back to the tree that he normally rests by and saw it was destroyed. He was saying, why God? Why was it destroyed? But God told him that it would be it would have been destroyed because of not listening to what he said about Nineveh and obeying his commands. The moral of the story is obedience. Put your hands together for him. As children of God, as we begin a new phase in church, let's go where God sends us. In Jesus' name. Okay, can you display the next picture? Okay, who know what that is? The coat of many colors. The coat of many colors. You want to say something about the coat of many colors? Okay, so who has that story? Oh, Caleb, he's on his way. Okay, the next. Okay, who know what is this? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. 
put your hands together for him. What's the story? Adam and Eve were the first man and woman created on earth. God had this garden, the Garden of Eden. God specifically told Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit from the tree of good and evil. Adam and Eve listened to God. One day, uh, the devil disguised himself as a snake uh, to convince Eve into eating the fruit from the tree of good and evil. The de Eve told the devil that the Lord said they should not eat the fruit from the tree, but the devil said that if they ate the fruit from the tree, they would be like God and know the difference between good and evil. Adam and Eve both ate the fruit from the tree, and when the Lord found out what they had done, he sent them out of the garden into the world. about faith and obedience because God comes to Abraham to make a covenant with him, telling him he's going to be the father of many nations. But Abraham doesn't believe him because he's old with no children. So when Sarah hears this, she tells Abraham to go sleep with her female slave, Hagar. But Abraham sleeps with Hagar and Ishmael is born. Now when Sarah hears of Ishmael, she, she starts mistreating Hagar and Hagar runs away to the desert. God finds Hagar and comforts her and tells her to go back to her mistress. Hagar goes back to her mistress and after a while, God comes to Abraham again, telling him in one year's time, he's going to have a child and he should name him Isaac. And Sarah hears this and she, and she laughs to herself. And God asks Abraham, why is Sarah laughing? Doesn't, he know that, doesn't she know that God can do all things? So after one year's time, Sarah gives birth to a child and she names him Isaac. Now God wants to test Abraham's faith and tells Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac as an offering in the region of Moriah. Abraham takes Isaac to Moriah and with two slaves and takes him three days to find a mountain. He finds the mountain and prepares an altar and, set, and sets the altar up. Isaac asks, we have, Father, we have the wood and we have the fire, but where is the offering? And Abraham says God will provide. So Isaac sets, so Abraham sets Isaac on top of the altar, and ties him around, and ties him with a rope, and is about to strike him until he hears the angel of the Lord say, "Do not lay a hand on that boy. Now I know you are fear. Now you know you fear me, and you have." Like, God, all things are possible. All right, can you tell us what this is? Who can tell us what that is? Who can tell us? Those of you just coming. Moses. Put your hands together, baby Moses. Moses was born to a Hebrew, for to Hebrew parents who, Moses was born to Hebrew parents. Who set him afloat on the Nile River to save him from the edict that every male son of every Hebrew family should be killed. Found by the Pharaoh's daughter, he ruled in, he reared in Hebrew court. Put your hands together for him. Now we have the next story. Who can tell us what that is? The 
prodigal son. A prodigal son. Can you put your hands together for him? Uh, the prodigal son is about, uh, the youngest son goes to his father to ask for his own portion of the inheritance. After he got it, he traveled to a far distant country and spent it on gambling and drinking. After that, he was hired, forced, um, as a pig farmer and was so desperate to the point where he had wanted to eat pig food, but he realized that his father's servants get better working conditions, so he goes to his father to ask for mercy and to ask to be his servant. But the father welcomed him back by hugging him and kissing him. The moral story about the prodigal son is about God's love for his children. Who can tell us what that is? Noah the Ark. Hello, church. It's me. Okay. So, uh, starting with Noah and the Ark. During a grave time of suffering where the human race weren't listening, were being disobedient, disrespected, and harassing God himself. During this time, God was fed up with the humans, fed up with their foolishness, their drinking, taking the women that he has blessed them with for foolishry. Kelly, okay. So, but out of all of these evil people, evil men and women, there was a man who was righteous, who God believes in. His name was Noah. God then one day called upon Noah, bringing Noah to a sacred area in the woods and told Noah, I will soon wash over the lands with great waves that would destroy everything in this sight. But you, someone who has followed and listened to my word, I want to save you and your family. God then gave Noah a plan to build a boat, a big boat that would take every animal, two of each, to carry him and his family to a new world. God then gave Noah the plan. Noah then went, after gathering all the materials, began to build the ark. As onlookers looked, walking over, asking Noah, Noah, what are you building? What are you creating? He said, oh, God is not okay with what we are doing. He sees and said that we have been disobedient and disrespecting him. He says, please give your life to God and God will forgive us. As the onlookers made fun of Noah, called him foolish, idiot, anything they could think of, Noah continued to do his work. On a certain day, after Noah had finished building the ark, lines of each animal had come two by two in waiting as they entered the ark. As they entered the ark, a wave there washed over the land, destroying towns, cities, trees, anything, washed over. But as it hit into the ark, the ark stayed strong as God has seen. After 40 days and 40 nights of washing over the land, the ark then stopped on a great piece of land. As Noah then came down, as each animal ran into the new world, Noah had found an altar and burned a goat that had came out of anywhere and basically gave an altar to God. Thank you, church. Okay. Can, who can identify that picture? David and Goliath. Put your hands together for him. What I know about David and Goliath is that David, uh, Goliath, a heavily armed Philistine, ch challenged Saul for 40 days who, to send out a man who could fight him, but no one would fight this Philistine. And then one day when David went to go bring food to his brothers, he, 
He saw Goliath defying the Israelites' armies and asked, who is this man? And then they told, the soldiers told David what was going on for the past few days. But then he, he said, I will fight him. And then Saul asked to see the man. And then he saw him and said, this is a little boy. He cannot fight. But David had faith in his God. And then Saul tried to put his arm on him. But it was too heavy. So he said, I will fight him in the name of the Lord. And then when David went to the river to pick up five smooth stones. And then he went to battleground. When he got there, Goliath said, are you a dog that you come at me with sticks and stones? And then he said, you come at me with sword and spears, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Okay, the next one, we're out of time. She's just gonna, the next one. Okay, we'll that. Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was a Jewish man who was took to Babylon at a very young age, and he loved God and obeyed his rules. Daniel was faithful, so King Darius made him the ruler of the empire of Babylon. And the other court officials didn't like it, so they tried to find something unfaithful of Daniel so he wouldn't be the empire or the ruler of Babylon. So they told King Darius to make a rule that for 30 days, anyone who prays to any other god will be thrown into the lion's den. Then later on, Daniel went to his place where he would pray and open the windows to Jerusalem and pray to him, to God. And the other court officials caught him praying to God and went to go tell King Darius. And King Darius didn't really like comprehend with it because he thought Daniel was faithful and he would never disobey him. And then he had to throw Daniel into the lion's den, but the God closed the mouths of the lions and angels were already surrounding him and then King Darius was thinking about it and couldn't sleep, so he went to Daniel's where, I mean, he went to the den where Daniel was laying down, and then he said, oh, Daniel, and then Daniel said, oh, King Darius, and King Darius said, are you still alive? And Daniel said, yes, and then, yeah. This is the story of the three wise men. The three wise men were biblical figures who followed a star from the east to Bethlehem in search of a newborn king. There they found Mary and the baby Jesus and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After, as Gentiles who acknowledge Christ's divinity, the three wise men claim an essential role in the epiphany, the manifestation of God to the world. They are depicted as wise and learned individuals who follow the star to find the Christ child, symbolizing Jesus as the Messiah to people outside the Jewish faith. Put your hands together for them. We have a gift card for all the participants. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. The young shall grow. I will encourage you to be 
telling Bible stories to your children, not TV major, not uh, cell phone major. Thank God for Baptist. Each time I remember the royal ambassador. As six, we know how many verses we can recite and many stories we know. It's not time for the good woman. Let's give them time. Amen. The daughters of Zion. The daughters of Zion.
T-shirts, hats, totes, hoodies, and ooh, really fancy water bottles. So bring your team signature.
praise the Lord. Let's give it up to the women. They brought a new flavor instead of a new that that's how anniversary should be. Amen. Now is the turn of the youth and young adults. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not told. Please, please, parents. There is so much children's te teachers can do. At home, engage your children in Bible stories. Please. God will help us. Because once they leave the house, that's it. So engage them. Well, are the youth and younger, are they ready?
Jump up to the most high. Jump up to the God for making us to see the 25th check. Come on, let somebody shout it out. Amen.
worship, begin to worship him, begin to worship him, how great he is, how great he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
is the kingdom come is the power yours is the glory forever amen and yours is the kingdom come is the power yours is the glory
present from the almighty God. Begin to ask for something special. Begin to ask for something special. Yes, Lord. Just worship him. Exalt his name. Magnify his name. Just, Just worship him. Man. Exalt his name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on Baba. Yeah. 
young adults quickly come forward. Thank you, Lord. We are in your presence.
Just, just let them stay where they are. I release the anointing that is struck you over you now. Every spirit of infirmity, I bind you now and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now, Holy Ghost. Touch them one by one. Touch them. Touch them. Receive a touch now. Receive a touch. Anyone sick here, receive your touch. In the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Don't be in a hurry to go. The choir is going to minister and then we have a big offering and then the bingo. God bless you. Maybe sit there for a while. Please and please don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is praise and power night. Uh, before the choir comes on, let it let clap for the choir as they come up. I want to pray for Mrs. Uh, Abiodun today, sir, buddy. You want this to be here? Oh. Okay. Happy birthday. Let's stretch our hands of us, sir. Celebrating your birthday on our best week. Father, I pray you perfect everything that concerns her. Give her a birthday present. Divine health. Unspeakable joy. More favor upon you in the name of Jesus. 
I see you are trembling to come a wall, but it has taken you so long. The hand of God will push you over in the name of Jesus. You overcome that mountain in your life in the name of Jesus. But this time next year, may you have more testimony than you have ever had. So will it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. you may be seated. Brother, we have a pastor and pastor, Mrs. Daramola, with us. God bless you. Let's nice see you. Praise the Lord. So I'll hand it over to the choir. Then after we take the offering and then bingo. I'm pleading with you tomorrow. Invite your friends and come here with a white handkerchief. It's going to be praise and power night. There's going to be impartation too. The choir. Come on, let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give him a clap offering for who he is in our lives. The Bible made us to know that he is a great creator. He is a mighty man in battle. He is our defense. He is our shield. Our refuge in whom we trust. Come on, worship that King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you know he is your El Shaddai, rise up as we worship him together. Hallelujah. Our El Shaddai is here. Omnipotent God is here. Amen.
is faithful. Our Lord, our God, bless him.
the God that has given us everything, has been faithful, has been wonderful for 25 years. We want to give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we just put our hands together for the choir and for everybody that God used today to minister, the men, the women, everybody. We want to give God praise in Jesus' name. Right now we want to give an offering. I want you to package something beautiful unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We are just going to go straight into giving an offering. In Psalm 96, it is an honor. It says in verse 6, Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto him, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. So we're going to give. Uh, we would like the choir to just, you know, help us with something hot. And we'll just come and give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise on our feet? just give you praise for all that you have done. We want to thank you for this opportunity you've given us.
to give. Father, we thank you for as many as have given, even those maybe watching online that have also given online. Father, we want to just thank you for every single person that has given. And we are asking that what has been given will be used to your glory. And because of their giving, because of our giving in this anniversary week, Father, we are asking that, Lord, the anniversary gifts that, Lord, are meant for us, Father, will be delivered unto everyone. And there will be testimonies to your glory. There will be a rising to the next level. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Maybe see that. Let's give it to the choir. Let's give it up. This is the last stage. But I know some people have gone back. Uh, God, in His mercy, gave us an anniversary baby. Sister Florence had a baby boy. Baby boy, today. Today. I'll hand over to Dami to hand over there to Church praise the Lord If you know our God is good If you know that he and Jesus are Ebenezer Somebody praise the Lord Hallelujah Well just to end off our group presentations We'll be playing church bingo now, in the youth and young adult church, we call it Jesus Bingo, because instead of saying bingo, we say Jesus, because there's, that's just a wonderful name. So right now, the ushers are helping me pass around a bingo sheet. Please make sure, just grab one. Just grab one. While they're passing it out, indeed, there's also bingo chips that are grabbing around. Just grab a handful. It's so that you can cover your spaces. So while they're passing out, Yes, there'll, indeed, there'll be prizes, yes, for the winners. So make sure you participate. So while they're passing it out, I'll just explain the rules of bingo in case you've never played it before. You will see 25 spaces on your sheet. The rule is to win the game. Wait, is everybody listening? Please, everyone listen to the rules because even in the youth and young adult church, I say that if you didn't hear me, it's your fault. So if I could have everyone's attention, please. Audience, thank you. So just to explain the rules, you have 25 spaces. In order to win, you need to go have five across or diagonal or straight down, but it all must be in a row. So I'll say that again, you either must have all of the same across, diagonal, or in a row down. And because it's our anniversary, the questions will be centered around the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Restoration Chapel. So on top of playing bingo, hopefully you know our church history as well to answer these questions. Now, lastly, when someone yells, Jesus, because instead of bingo, don't clear your boards. Do not clear your boards just in case the person was wrong. We can continue the game. So they're handing out bingo chips. I'll give some time. If you don't have a sheet of paper, somebody shout hallelujah if you don't have a sheet of paper. Oh, I heard a hallelujah. Uh, one sheet is missing over here. Who doesn't have a sheet? If you don't have a bingo sheet, shout hallelujah. Isaac, my friend Isaac, he wants a sheet. Yes, just the, the chips that are coming around it so you can cover the squares so you know that you hit the space. Does everybody who's playing have a sheet? Okay, I will explain the rules one more time. So in order to win, you must have the same across on the, either the top, diagonal, or down. If you have all five spaces covered, you yell Jesus, and we will make sure it's right. Do not clear your boards. Are we ready to play? 
those are to cover your sheets. If you got little sheets of paper or little chips, it's so you can cover the spaces. Does everyone understand the game? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and start. Oh, also, please, if you know the answer, don't yell it out loud, okay? Please, because then you'll ruin the game, so don't say it out loud. So the first thing is, this person was the first guest minister after the inauguration of Restoration Chapel. This person was the first guest minister after the inauguration of Restoration Chapel. Don't say the answer out loud. This will show if you know your church history. The next one is the name of the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. The name of the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Again, please don't say it out loud. The next one, how many times did Daddy Gio visit Restoration Chapel? How many times did Daddy Gio visit Restoration Chapel? The next one, what is the name of the church we used to hold our services before moving here on Como? What was the name of the church we used to hold our services before moving here on Como? The next one is, what is the day of the week we hold our midweek service? What is the day of the week we hold our midweek service? Next, this is one of the departments in our church. This is one of the departments in our church. Next, what year was the first marriage done in our church? What year <laughs> was the first marriage done in our church? Bonus points if you remember the name of the people. Just joking. Who was the first youth and young adults leader? Who was the first youth and young adults leader? Nobody has it yet? Okay, that's good. Okay. When is Pastor Appreciation Month? When is Pastor Appreciation Month? The next one is, when did we become the provincial headquarters? When did Restoration Chapel become the provincial headquarters? Wow, nobody has it yet? Okay, wow. Okay, here we go. Where was the first house fellowship held? I heard Jesus. Okay, nobody, don't clear your board. Do not clear your board yet. Okay, Deacon Isaac, you have Jesus? Please tell me what you, okay. Let's give him a round of applause as he comes up and he can read it for us. Or I'll, maybe I'll come there. Let me come there. Oh wait, I can't, I need the papers. Oh, I heard another Jesus. Okay, if you have Jesus, please come up so we can make sure, so we can confirm. We need to confirm. Do not clear your board in case they got the answers wrong. Do not clear your board in case they got it wrong. Okay, let's see, Tomiwa, let's see. So she has, oh wait, is it diagonal? It's not, a, well, it's not Jesus, but good try. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, let's see, Deacon Isaac. So 2020, 2001 is correct. That was when the first marriage was done in Restoration Chapel. Pastor Kamal Sanusi, that is correct. That was the first guest minister after the inauguration. The name of our general overseer is, yes, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Mr. Lawal's house indeed was where the first house fellowship was held. And lastly, how many times did Daddy Gio come was two. So let's give Deacon Isaac a round of applause. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's play again. Oh, you have a Jesus too? Okay. <laughs> No, no, he actually got it, he actually got it. Oh, the next person. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got other questions. We have other questions. Okay.
Okay, let's see. See, let me. Okay, hers is correct as well. Hers is good too. Okay, yes. Okay, so we have two Jesus. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, yes, Pastor is correct. I won't say the answer anymore. So I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said the answers, but at least for those now you know. Okay, everyone clear your boards. We're going to play another round. Yeah, we're going to play another round. Clear your board. <laughs> That's how we play bingo. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Here we go. What was Pastor, Pastor Akani's occupation before becoming a full-time minute pastor? What was Pastor Akani's occupation before becoming a full-time pastor? What is the name of our parent church? What is the name of our parent church? Like the church that gave birth to us. Yes. What years did Daddy Gio come to our church? What years did Daddy Gio come to our church? This word is in Restoration Chapel's mission statement. This word is in Restoration Chapel's mission statement. How many churches did Restoration Chapel give birth to? How many churches did Restoration Chapel give birth to? Name of the first pastor from the first church we planted. Name of the first pastor from the first church we planted. We, we got it, Jesus? Okay, let's give him a round of applause. Let me confirm. I won't say the answers. I'll just confirm. We got a Jesus. Let's give it up. Let's give it up for God. Thank you. All right. We'll play one last round. Don't clear your board. Oh, you have another Jesus? Okay. Okay. Let me, I'll come and check. Okay, just watch Jesus. Okay, don't clear your board. This is the last round. This is the last round. Don't clear it so that we can have an automatic winner for the next one. I hope you guys are taking notes. This is indeed our church history. Okay, here we go. What was the building, like this building, Restoration Chapel, before becoming a church? What was this building before becoming a church? What was this building before becoming a church? The next one is, what is the name of the street the first church service was held before coming to Como? What is the name of the street? Jesus? You have Jesus? Okay, and Auntie, now you can call because I know yours was, that was out there. <laughs> okay, let me confirm. Wait. Okay, we have one Jesus here. Okay, I need to, I need to. <laughs> and, and Jesus here. Let's give them a round of applause. All right. And that actually could, I'm going to just read these last questions just for fun because I want us to keep knowing our church history. Okay, this one we'll just say out loud if anybody knows. Where was the first church we planted? M Milwaukee, yes, that was where the first church was planted, yes. 
No, we're just, this one is no, we're just saying the answer out loud just so we can know the history. Who knows the name of the founder of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, or not Restoration Chapel? Say that one more time, what? Yes, good, okay. Next is who knows the church anniversary? When was, or let me restate this. What was the first church service that we've ever held? Like the, the date, the month? Yes, September 6, 1998, good. And then what is the Redeemed Christian Church of God's core Bible verse? What is the Bible verse that Redeemed Christian Church of God? Hallelujah, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Second to last one is who can tell me what is the name of the Redeemed Christian Church of God North America overseer. Good, good. And then the last one is what year did we move to Como? What year did we move to Como? I haven't heard it. What? I hear it mixed. What? 2003. That is when we moved to Como. Yes, all right, praise the Lord. Thank you for participating in the church bingo. Hallelujah. And if you won, make sure to come up to me so we can make sure you got a prize. Praise the Lord. So, some of us, that I don't know about the history, at least from this answer. You know the history of the church, a little bit of it. Thank you all for coming once again. Please, please don't make noise at the back yet. Please invite your friends for tomorrow. Tomorrow is power night. Uh, Brazil, come and give us a rundown of the remaining program. Saturday, the plan, and then Sunday. Praise the Lord. I hope we are enjoying the anniversary series as we continue. Um, tomorrow is Friday, the praise and power night. Like pastor has requested of us to invite friends, family, and relatives, they will be richly blessed. On Saturday, we'll be having Tomorrow is 6, 6.30 to 10. 6.30 p.m. to 10. And please and please, I want to beg us that will be coming, especially at the parking lot. We have limited space. I want us to do parking rightly so that it can contain us. We don't have enough space so that people will be parking rightly. And on Saturday, we'll be having our gala night. Is anyone excited? Gala night at Shoreview, and we'll be starting by 4.30 p.m. 4 p.m. We have the happy hour for about one hour, or oh, 30 minutes happy hour, and uh, we'll be taking pictures. Um, the red carpet section will be open for each and every one of us to take pictures, and uh, we, we only have uh, half an hour for that. No uh, African time. No African time, please. And once it's 8 o'clock, we will draw our curtain. And Sunday will be the grand finale. And I pray each and every one of us will be richly blessed as we come and invite someone in the name of Jesus. The dress code for Saturday is evening dress. You just put on a nice evening dress and the men with suit. Formal wear. Please, on Saturday and on Sunday, which is the grand finale, is uh, silver and royal blue. That day, we'll have to put on our dancing shoes. Um, it's going to be a Thanksgiving. The 
It's going to be a Thanksgiving service, and that will be um, the grand finale. And we hope each and every one of us will be richly blessed. Oh, we'll be having our guest minister that day on Sunday, Pastor Sunday Oyele. Oh, yeah, he will be ministering. He will be ministering powerfully, and uh, we all should come expectant that with this anniversary, God Almighty will reposition us for lifting in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I think that is all about it. We look forward to seeing you people tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Let's give it up for the anniversary committee. They've done a great job. And also, let's give it up for the women. They brought a new dimension completely. A new dimension. It's not what I was expecting. They changed it from the normal, and it's very good. Let's give it up to them. And of course, the youth and young adults. It shows that we have a great future with the youth and young adults. Please and please invite your friends tomorrow. God will bless you as you do that. To close up, I want to call on uh, Pastor Daramola, House of Prayer, to lead us in the closing prayer. Let somebody shout hallelujah. That hallelujah is not born again. If you know and you are happy, with 25 years in ministry, 25 years in ministry, come on, jump up and shout hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We are opportune to have our Father and the Lord around. Hallelujah. Many people started, but halfway they are gone. Hallelujah. But our daddy is still rolling, walking, speaking. The anointing is still flowing. Hallelujah. We want to celebrate with you. Daddy, may the Lord strengthen you more and more in the name of Jesus. You know, you have to be praying for him more. Hallelujah. Many men of God are no longer in the faith. Hallelujah. But he's strengthening more and more. Congratulate somebody beside you. Say congratulations. Welcome to somebody. Say congratulations. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our God.
in Jesus name Father we pray for the rest of the program this week Lord we pray that your glory will be seen our life we experience your glory in the name of Jesus and we pray for this ministry it will go higher in the name of Jesus from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Father we bless your name as we go the Lord will go before us we will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. We anoint our head with fresh oil. From today, we will go higher and higher in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, shall join the hearts of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Because it's 25 years. Hallelujah. Because it's 25 years. Because it's 25 years. You have to prophesy in the life of at least 525 people and say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall do it in the heart of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall do it in the heart of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall do it in the heart of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall do it in the of the Lord. Forever and ever, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall grant hearts of the Lord forever and ever, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall grant hearts of the Lord forever and ever, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall grant hearts of the Lord forever and ever, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow. Follow you all the days of your life. Shall join hands of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 